So guys, it's time for me to get back to my regular content now that PaizoCon is over. And what better way to do that than with a teamwork build? So if you've ever wanted to build a character that can go fast, this is the build for you. It's time for the Speed Demon. Let's dive in. So of course, first we gotta start with Ancestry. And we're gonna go with Elf, so we're immediately faster than most things. That 30 foot move speed is going to help a lot. And for our heritage, there's a reason this build is called the Speed Demon, as we will be taking the Tiefling Heritage. For class, we're playing a Monk today. And as I said in my last video, you can pretty much go with any background you want here as long as you get the stats you need. Which are Strength 10, Dexterity 18, Constitution 10, Intelligence 14, we'll talk about why we need that later in this video, Wisdom 16, and Charisma 10. Our first class feat for this build is going to be Key Rush. This will not only give us an extra stride or step, but we'll be moving so fast that we actually become concealed. Meaning it will be harder for enemies to target us. And then of course we do have to talk about our Ancestry feat, and what better one to take than Nimble Elf for 5 foot more movement speed. So there's no point in being as fast as we are going to be in this build unless we can get our enemies to chase after us, right? And one of the ways we can incentivize them to do that is with the next feat in this build, Stunning Fists. So when we do a flurry of blows, if either one of them hit, the target has to make a fortitude saving throw against our class DC or be stunned one. Or if they critically fail, stunned three. But that's just one of the ways we can incentivize them to come after us. And then for the free archetype, we're going to take the Acrobat Dedication. This will eventually give us Legendary in Acrobatics along with our other skills, but more importantly, will give us access to some feats that will really help our action economy and help us go even faster. Now, of course, it's time to talk about general feats. Again, you can take these in any order you want, but these are the ones you should take for this build. First up is Fleet, obviously, because we want to be as fast as possible in this build. And of course, we will be taking Toughness, Die Hard, and Canny Acumen. However, for this build, we'll be taking Canny Acumen for Perception. We'll talk about why when I get to the team reports. And for our final general feat, we will want to take Incredible Scouts, as we will be scouting ahead a lot in this build since we're so fast. Then at level 4, we'll be taking Wolf Stance. Unfortunately, a lot of enemies are going to have high fortitude saves. So with this, if we're flanking, we can trip them, targeting their reflex save. And this will also give them another incentive to chase after us. Plus, Wolf Stance does increase the damage of our unarmed strikes as well. Then, of course, we need another Acrobat feat, so we're going to take Contortionists. I want you to imagine this situation for this feat. We're scouting ahead and we run into a wall with a crack in it. One that we can squeeze through. We squeeze through it at full speed, mind you. And we run into an enemy on the other side. We're alone, so we run back through the crack. However, while we can move through it at full speed, enemies that want to go through that crack have to go at half speed. That combined with our speed will give us a few rounds to talk with our party and figure out a strategy. So yes, that's why we're taking this feat. And for our level 5 ancestry feat, we're going to be taking Elven Instincts. This allows us to get a plus 2 bonus to perception checks made for initiative. Thus, we have a pretty good chance of going first, which is what we want in this build. So, for team report number one, let's talk about speed first, as that is the whole point of this build. Right now, at level five, if you've taken the feats I've taken, you should have a speed of 50 feet. Meaning, if we use Key Rush, we can move 200 feet per round. But we're not going to need anywhere near that much. In fact, in most cases, we're going to need half that or less. Because we can stun and or trip targets, they're automatically losing one action if we succeed. And using one action moves us 50 feet. Meaning, most enemies at this level are going to have to spend two actions to even get up to us. Meaning, meaning that if they want to get up to us, 
they have to spend their full turn and don't even get to attack. And with Elven Instincts and our pretty good perception, there's a good chance we're gonna go first, which is what we want. Speaking of perception, there's two reasons why we need to take canny acumen for perception. The first is we do have high wisdom, so we stand a pretty good chance of going first if we're a master in perception. The second reason is that one of the things we don't want to happen is for us to run right into a trap. That would be incredibly bad, so getting our perception as high as possible is a good thing. And finally, when we start upping our saving throws due to Path to Perfection, we want our highest saving throw to be Will Saves. Because another thing we don't want is to get controlled. That would be very bad for the party. And before I forget, the reason that we're taking Key Rush is for that concealment. Not necessarily for the extra stride. Although being able to step twice is pretty amazing. Especially against creatures that have attacks of opportunity. Okay, real quickly, for level 6, we we'll want to take Abundant Step so we can teleport past obstacles that would normally stop us right in our tracks, such as water. And yes, I am aware that Water Step exists. So you may want to take that here instead if you're running into a lot of aquatic creatures. Then we'll take Dodge Away to help us with our AC and to allow us to step if they miss. Then we'll want to pick up Stand Still so that if enemies do get up to us, we can punch them as a reaction. And of course, Tumbling Strike is just great action economy. Flat out. For our level 9 Ancestry feat, we're going to take Fiendish Wings. That will help us with a couple of our weaknesses, mainly being walls and creatures that are climbing. At level 10, we'll take our second dedication, the Witch Dedication, which we'll want to pick the one and only Arcane Patron, that being Rune. That will give us access to some spells that will help this build. We'll talk about those in the second team report. And of course, at the same level, we'll also want to take Basic Lesson for Lesson of Vengeance. With Needle of Vengeance, if we name an ally, then we give the enemy an incentive not to attack that ally and instead try to come after us. And if we name ourselves, then we can do some damage to an enemy if they do decide to attack us. Which one of these you use will ultimately depend on the situation. At level 12, you may want to take Meditative Focus to get your focus points back quicker. However, if you're watching this video after Player Core 2 comes out, or you're using the new focus point rules, you're going to want to take Flurry of Maneuvers here instead as that will allow you to trip and stun an opponent as part of your Flurry of Blows. For the free archetype, you're going to want to take either Tumbling Opportunist, if you took Meditative Focus, or you're going to want to take Witch's Charge here, if it's the other situation. Tumbling Opportunist would essentially allow you to do the same thing that Flurry of Maneuvers would allow you to do, just in a different way. And I'll talk about Witch's Charge when you get to it, because you will want to take that eventually, regardless of what you pick here. At level 13, you will want to take the Quick Spring Archetype Skill feat to allow you to move faster when you tumble through an enemy's space. In addition, you also want to take the Fiend's Door Ancestry feats. This allows you to cast Dimension Door as an innate spell once a day, giving us another way of getting out of sticky situations. Next, we finally have room for Wolf Drag, making it even easier for us to trip a foe. For the next three free archetype feats, we'll want to take Basic, Expert, and Master Witch Spellcasting, allowing us to cast even more Witch Spells. Then it's time for Flinging Blow. So if an enemy decides to cast a Wall Spell, a solid one like Wall of Force or Wall of Stone or something like that, if there's an enemy near the wall, we can use that wall against them. And then just fly over the wall. Speaking of which, our last ancestry feat for this build is going to be Relentless Wings. Allowing us to fly all the time instead of just once a day for 10 minutes. Then we'll, at level 18, we'll take Meditative Wellspring to get our focus points back even quicker. And finally, for level 20, we'll take Enduring Quickness. This gives us an extra action, but we can only use it to stride or leap 
or to provide one of the actions for a high jump or a long jump. Thus, we are now even faster. And the last feat for this bill is either going to be which is charge, or if you already took that, then you'll want to take Patron's Breath here. Patron's Breath will give us more spells. At this point, we're going to be way ahead of our allies since we are way faster. So this will give us a spidey sense to warn us if our party is in danger. For teamwork report number two, now we have a speed of 70 feet. That combined with the rest of our feet means we can move almost 500 feet per round. Could we go faster? Of course we could. But honestly, 500 feet per round is more than enough. And now enemies have way more reasons to chase after you. The reason that we need the witch dedication is because of spells like command and suggestion. Because of us stunning and tripping them isn't enough of an incentive for them to come after us, then how about we force them to? Plus, with the arcane list, we can have access to spells like teleportation as well. And blink charge. These are the types of spells you want to have prepared for your witch dedication. And of course, now we can trip and stun them, making it that much harder for them to get to us. Or anyone else in the party, for that matter. And that's going to do it for this belt. If you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like. And don't forget to check out the Patreon page for a Google Sheet for this build and other builds on this channel. My next teamwork build will be one that will help out this build a lot. But if you want to see what else the Acrobat archetype has to offer, you can check out this video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. And remember, teamwork is vital.